This is the part two of the Microsoft Access 2013 tutorial. Now a lot of the things that you'll be learning here also applies to 2010. So if I wanted to open my existing file that I had saved in the first video, I called it contact once, I could just open it from here or I can go through open other files and then browse to where the files are either in my computer or in my what's called the sky drive which is the cloud service of Microsoft. So I can just click here and it opens. I can enable the content uh, because I know this is a file which I created. Now there's my table. I can double click on it to look at it. So I haven't added anything more to it. I can close it. If I wanted to go to design view straight away I can just right click on it and I can go to design view. Now I wanted to share something about what is called the input mask like I showed you in the first video for the telephone number I can add this input mask and you see how it put this number there like it's a special way that access understands what to do with the input mask. So what I want to do is I want to add a new field so I'm going to click here uh, somewhere and I'll insert a row and I'll put zip code. Now zip code is the American zip code which has a certain format. So now if I click in the input mask, I start the wizard, say yes to saving it, and you see there is the zip code and there is a format for it already created and I can finish it and there is the format. So the American zip code is like 31211, so it's like five digits and the rest of the stuff is optional. So if I come back to the front end by using the data sheet view or from here, say yes to it and let's see zip code. So you see there it is 31211 and there is the zip code. Now say for example you wanted to put a zip code or what in most of the world also in Canada it is known as postal code but your postal code format is different so how do you create it so I'll show you how to do that. So I'll come to the design view and right above here I'll add another row and say I'll say I want to make a postal code. Now the data type for postal code should be short text because in our case in Canada our postal codes have a format like M4J to J2 so that's like the format we use in Canada. So I'll just bring this up. So the format we use is this. So I need to create an input mask which will force people to put an alphabet, number, alphabet and then a space and then a number and also make the capital char characters capital. So even if I type it lowercase it will be uppercase. So to do this I have to first click in the line for input mask. Always make sure that you are on the field that you want to change otherwise you'll change city for postal code so I'll click on input mask I'll start the wizard by pressing the dots at the end say yes to saving it now I need to edit so there is the edit button now when you run the edit button don't start editing because you'll be changing the phone number what we want to do is we want to create a new blank record so I click it so I get a new one and then I'll say let's type call it postal code. Now this is where I have to put a way to tell access what is it that I wanted to do. So to understand this it's better to go into the help function and this help window will come up. Hopefully it will take us to the right section. So there it is come to the input mask. I'm going to scroll down a little and I'm going to keep going down and here is what I'm looking for. So these are the characters that we need to use in that section for input mask so that access will understand. So let's look at a few. So zero character means user must enter a digit. So wherever I want things to be a number I have to put zero. 9 is you can enter a digit. That means entering a digit is optional. So in my case, it's not an option that people can skip a number. They have to type it. L means you must enter a letter. And A means, uh, sorry, where is one more? There is another one which says you can enter a letter or you, right there, the question mark. 
So in my case, I need a must, so I'll have to use L. So I'm just going to show you here. So to show you what I'll have to type, I'll have to type L, 0, L, space, 0, L, 0. So this means alphabet, number, alphabet, space, number, alphabet, number, because that's the understanding I get from my help window. And then if I scroll down, it will tell me that this symbol here, will convert all characters that follow to uppercase. So in front of this, I'm going to put that symbol. So this is what I need to use. So And if I want, I can just copy it from here. I'll minimize this and also this. And I'll put it at the start up here. The placeholder is, if you don't have to use it, it's like, where does it supposed to go? It always is from the left, so I don't have to worry about it. And I'll type a sample data. Now, I won't type it capital. I'll just type it lowercase. And you see, it automatically puts it uppercase. And I'll click close. And I'll see a postal code in there. Now, I can choose that, and I can click finish. So this way, you can actually create whatever type of input mask you want. It could be anything that you like. I can click finish. And I'll come to the data sheet view, say yes to saving it. Now let's see where we're supposed to go there. So if I'm trying to type M, 5, J, 2, J, 2, works. I didn't have to put capital letters. It makes it for me. So this is a really good way to where you can set things up for yourself. I'm going to come back to design view and I wanted to tell you a little bit about the default value a little more. I talked about in the previous video that say if I had a field called country and I wanted the default value to be Canada, default value means all the records should have this value. I can type it. But there are also other ways of doing this. For so example, in date of birth, if I want it, I could set the default value to be today's date. So I can put equal and then I can type N-O-W now and you see the explanation comes up too if you and you can start understanding it and I'm going to start a bracket and then I'm going to close the bracket so that's saying equal to now and I'm putting the parentheses starting and closing it so let's see if I come to the front data sheet view and you see the new record has today's date today is 31st July that's when I'm making this video 2013 now this date is based on what your format is for that field. So just a reminder from the previous video, I'll come to design view. My format right now is medium date. I can change it to say general date. So let's see what happens if I do that. I'll come to the data sheet view and you see the general date puts the date like this with the timestamp on it. So this is a good way to do that. And if I had chosen this to be medium time, then I will not get the date at all. I'll only get the time. So depending on what you choose, you will get that. So I can set it back to medium date. So that's the thing with default value where you can do that. Now I will explain to you what is known as validation rule, which is right underneath it. So I'll remove this default value. I'm just trying to give you all the tools uh, to understand what you can do with this and you can start thinking how this can be useful in solving certain problems in access and also if you are creating your own database at school or for your personal business use. Validation rule means whatever expression or rule I set here, access will make sure that the person is entering something that fits that rule. So say for example, I wanted to make sure that nobody by mistake puts a date of birth that is in the future. So date of birth has to be in the past. So I can put some a validation rule that says that this field has to be less than today's date. So to give you an example in the validation rule, I'll put this symbol, the less than, now and I'll start the bracket and close the bracket. So I'm saying that whatever date goes in this, it should be in the past. And now in the validation text, I can leave a note and say, do not enter a future date. That means if somebody tries to enter a date 
in the future it we will get a error message so I'll, let's see if it works say yes to it and I'll come to the field for date of birth and I'll try to put say 12th August 13 which is 2013 and I'll hit tab and you see there is my validation text which is say do not enter a future date and if I change that to 11 so that's 2011 and now it works so the validation rules are really useful because say for example I had a field called order date and then I had a field called shipping date so I can put a validation rule that says that this shipping date has to be 20 dates 20 days more than the order date so we, I make sure that nobody puts a shipping date which is like a week from now so they will have to put a shipping date which is 20 days more than the order date so just give you an idea how that would work in the previous video I talked about that in access now you can do what's called calculated field in the table before you had to do it through query so earlier I'm gonna click here in the full name in the first video I had done this expression here first name and space last name so because I wanted to add the first name and last name together so I'll just start this dot up so I get a big window so but say for example because I also have a field called middle name and I wanted to join it together then what I'll do is along with that I'll put I'll add the middle name and you see this is really good from 2010 onwards you get all these options showing up so it says first name and middle name and last name I'll click OK and let's come to the front end and I'm just gonna go across and there it is because I don't have anything in the middle name there's nothing showing up and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here so while clicking on the top I'm highlighting the whole column I point to it when I get the arrow left click and hold it and I'm gonna drag it and you see I'm gonna drop it right next to this so say if I put a middle name M now we see it shows up there N it shows up there I'll come back to the design view or right from here I can right click and I can go to modify expressions not working from here nope I'm the wrong one full name modify expression make sure you're doing it on the right one I'm making the same mistake and if I wanted to put a spaces then I'll put after the end I'll put quotation space quotation and symbol and also do the same thing on this side quotation space quotation and the and symbol and I'll click OK so there it is the only problem is in this Lisa Jones because I don't have a middle name it's leaving two spaces you see there are two extra spaces so I need to somehow tell access that if the middle name is empty don't put the middle name space in it so there is a function which is known as if or I if in access so I'll show you how a I if function is very useful so to create that I'll have to modify the formula so I'll right click here and I can go to modify you can do it in the design view also and here I need to put the if function so I'm just going to delete that so that you can see it nicely so I type I I and you see as I'm typing the I if function comes up now the I if function is the if function the way it works is the logical function which in this case I want to say if the middle name is null null means empty then make sure you put only the first name and last name otherwise put the first name middle name and the last name so there are three parts to it and you will see it. so I'll double click on it and then I'll start typing middle name and I'll double click on middle name and I'll type is null comma so that's my expression this is what is known as the expression and you see there is on the bottom expression comma through part through part means what to do if that statement is true so I'm saying okay if the middle name is null then what I would like you to do is put first name double click on first name and quotation space quotation and last name comma so I've done the through part now the last third part which is false which is 
So what if the middle name is not now? That is if the middle name is has something in it. Then what I would like you to do is first name and quotation space quotation and middle name and quotation space quotation and last name. If you remember the the quotation and the space is there so that it adds the space and then I close the bracket so that it ends it nicely I click OK now let's see so you see the Lisa Jones there is no extra space there is only one space now now as soon as I type something in there it should fill in nicely okay So that is called I if function and you can use it in many different ways. I can create a new field called region and I can say if the region if the city is to equal to Toronto then make sure that the region says Canada. So I can set this up automatically to show up Canada based on regions and I can use different if functions to do that. I want to show you some more calculated fields so I'm going to close this table and I'm going to go to create table design because I want to create some more tables I can go to create table design and in this one I want to show you something about where I can do some calculations like math calculations so say this was like um, a sales thing so I this is a field called sales ID I'll set the data type to auto number I'll make it primary key and at this point I'll save it and I'll just give it a name table sales so I know what it is I like to type capital S to differentiate it and then up here I want to say um, product name which should be words or numbers so I can put that price so for the price I'll say make it currency right and then I can say quantity and I can say quantity should be number because I need to have a certain numbers and for quantity I can choose a field size because they have different types of field size is it an integer or is it a long integer so if it was like a scientific type calculation then you can use like double or singles and things like that so sometimes you don't need long integer we'll just leave it for now and now I wanted to do a calculation what is my calculation price multiply by quantity that will give me what is the total price so if I have a field called total price and I'll have to do a calculated field so I choose calculated and then up here I'll start typing price For some reason it's not coming up just give me a second I need to check something I couldn't get the, the words properly the price and things in the list because I hadn't saved it so what I did is I'm gonna delete this row so I can save the file first and now I can create the total file because it wasn't total okay just put a total and I'll start the calculated field now if I stop writing price you see the price showed up and I'll put the asterisk symbol which stands for the multiplication symbol quantity and there it is I'll click OK now let's see if it is working I'll come to the front end and I'll type the name of the product office 2007 the price is 110 and this is two quantity and when I hit tab that should turn to 220 so you see the total changed I'll do one more so there is the calculation automatically happening now if I wanted I could put a field for tax include the tax in the calculation too or I have a field called tax where I want to figure out that the tax is 13% uh, of the total price so I can figure that out too and add it to my calculations. so all of these things are really useful in the table itself which couldn't be done 
earlier, and this is also possible in Access 2010. Now let's just add an if function to how the if function can work with the calculation. So I'll come back to design view. I'm going to change that total. I'll call it subtotal so that I'll have another field called total later. And what I like to do is save it. And just to be on the safe side, I can even close the table because I'm finding that when I'm making these changes and trying to do the calculated field, they don't work right away because it hasn't registered this new field. So I can close it. I can right click and come back to the design view. Now I want to create a discount field. So I want to figure out who will get a discount. So I can use the if function, which is I, I want to say that if the subtotal is greater than $150, they should get 10% discount. Otherwise, they will got, get nothing. So I'll come here, start the calculated field, and I want to start the expression IIF. Double click on it. Subtotal, I can choose it. Subtotal is greater than 150, comma. So that's my expression. Now I need to tell it what to do if that expression is true. So I'll say if that is true, give them subtotal. So I just choose multiply by 0 0.10, which is 10%, comma, space. You can put a space or not, doesn't matter. Otherwise, give them subtotal. No, I don't just don't want to give them anything. So I'll just put zero. This is my third part, which is if the sale is not greater than 150, they will get zero. I'll click OK. Let's see if it's working. I'll come to the data sheet view, say yes. And there it is. So they both are selling more than 150, so they're getting 10% discount. If I change this quantity to 1, now there is no discount. Now, if I wanted to do a total, I could do it from here too, as I mentioned in the previous video. I can click here, calculated field. I can do a currency calculated field. And now the total will be subtotal plus the discount. I'll click OK. And there is the calculation and I can add the title on the top. So there it is. So the if function is very flexible, very powerful and there is also a nested if that if you wanted you can look into it uh, by going to the help window and checking out the nested if. You'll find that it solves a lot of other problems that you may come across. I'm going to close this table and I'm going to double click on this table contacts and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to enter like 10 to 12 different records with some information because I want to show you some things with sorting and filtering so that we can understand those navigation aspects so you can pause the video too if you are practicing along with me so I have some nine records so that is good enough for me to show you some of the things so the first thing in terms of navigation you can look on the top under the home tab these are called tabs and these are called ribbons. Now if by mistake you double click on it, you'll find that ribbons are hiding. You click it, shows up, you click away, it goes away. So you never have to double click, but if you make a mistake, just double click it one more time so that the ribbons stay there. You also have the table tools from which you can do a few things. However, you'll find a lot of your buttons in the home tab too. So from here, if I wanted to delete delete a record, I'll click in the delete drop down button and I can choose delete record or I can choose to delete a column. So that means this whole column will be gone. If I delete a record, this whole row one will be gone. Now the thing to remember here is that if you do that, access will never use number one again because access controls the numbering system. Because this is set to auto number, you cannot reuse it. So if you wanted control over it, I would suggest you choose the data type number or text. And if I try to delete it, it will say, are you sure? There is no undo. Now the number one is gone. Even if I try to create a new one, it will create with number 10. I can click the new button if I want it to start a new record, or I can just click here on the bottom. It's up to you. There is also options to increase the row height, or so you can click it, put a number there, or you just increase it from here. And I can click here and then go to more, and I can increase the field width, that is the thickness of the width, either by putting a number here or I can just extend it. 
up to you. You can do spelling check if you want it. You can also use the find option to find things. So I click on find and then I can type, let's see, I'm looking for Mary. Now the only thing to watch out here is that when you type Mary, it should say look in the whole document rather than just the field. Otherwise, it will only look for Mary in the middle name because I had clicked in it. I'll click on find next. So you see it finds it. And there is no more. You also have the option to do replace. So I can find Mary and I can say replace it with Nancy. Now if I say replace all, all of them will be replaced or I can go through find. Now it highlights it and I can say replace this one. So I can do that. Find next, no more found. So this is finding and replacing that you can use. You can always do the formatting options if you needed to make any changes to something. I can put colors, put it on everything, make it back to automatic. Now we come to the options for sorting and filtering. So say if I click in my date and I choose sort ascending. So it will put things in date order starting with the earliest birth date in this case to the oldest. I do descending. So it will do the opposite way. Show me the newest birthday and then go to the old ones. And it will sort everything. And all your records are getting rearranged. You don't have to highlight anything. I can remove the sort to go back to the way it was where it goes back to the numberings here. Or I can click here and choose ascending for this. The next I want to tell you what is known as filter by selection. Selection means show me only the records that I want. So say if I click in Jones and I click selection, uh, I think I need to highlight the whole thing maybe, selection and I say equal to Jones. Now you see I get all the records that match the word Jones and I can toggle it to remove it. So that's filter by selection and you can use it anywhere. If I click on, I'll just type Toronto a couple of places. So now if I go to filter by selection, I say equal to Toronto. You see, even if I didn't highlight because it was next to it, I can get all my Toronto city records only. I can use toggle to remove the filter. Now, along with filter by selection, there is another option known as filter by form. Because right now I can only do one when I'm using filter by selection. By filter by form, I can filter by multiple criteria. So I can do... I can choose Toronto and I can say telephone number I only want 905 area code so I type 905 and I put the asterisk. The asterisk stands for a wild card that means match the first three characters after that I don't care and I'll use the toggle to apply the filter. I think under year two you have an option to apply filter. And you see now it matches both criteria. Now if it didn't match both criteria I will not get the results. So I can remove the toggle. And you can do filter by many different criteria. I can type a name and a city or last name and a city or more than two or three or four criteria. But it will try to match all. And then you will not get any results if it doesn't match everything. I'll come back to filter by form. I'll delete that. And say if I put Toronto and I say I'm looking for somebody with starting their name is L. And I put the star. That means match L and something, somebody's name starting with L in the city of Toronto and I hit toggle and you see it finds me two matching city of Toronto and I can press the toggle to remove it. Now when I'm in the filter by form if I want it I could actually save this query so I can reuse it all the time. So if I click here and I can save as query and I can give it a name. So I'll say uh, this is Toronto first name L or something like that. I'll also click OK. So now you see there is this query listed here. So I'm just going to close this and say I'm going to change um, someone's name here. So it will be with L and I'll make it Toronto. 
So now if I run this query Toronto FNL, it should give me three records. So I'm hoping it updated. So I'll just close this so that it gets saved. And I'll double click on this just to show you. And you see now it shows me three records. And this will sit there all the time. So whenever I need it, I keep running it. So I can save lots of different queries like this. And we'll look at some more queries in the next video. So this is just a nice way to find things. I'll come back to table contacts. Now you can freeze records. So you see when I go sideways, I lose some of the columns here. So say I wanted to make sure that the full name is always visible. So I'll click here and I can freeze this if I want to. So under more, I believe, yeah, if there is an option called freeze. So I click it. And now you see this column is frozen and it is on the left hand side. And if I scroll sideways, you'll find that that column always stays there. Now I have to make sure I unfreeze all columns. In this case, now they're using the word fields. Now I click here on the top and I look for the arrow and I'll drag it. Something's happening to my computer. I'm just going to check it. I'm not sure why I can just click it and usually I should get that arrow pointing to that full name so I can drag it back to where it came from. For some reason I cannot do it. I was able to do it in the previous video. I think something's happening with my recording program. So try this. It should work in your computer. I'll try to do it in my next video again. So that was about freezing and just remember to unfreeze otherwise it will not let you move it back. And you can freeze more than one column. So if I click on something or in this row this field and I choose freeze it so it will be frozen there so you can freeze multiple like this the next thing I want to talk about is that you can take your information and you can export it to Word or Excel so but before I did that if I wanted that you know what there are certain fields I don't need so I can click here and I can right click here and I can hide this field so you see that field is gone. I can click here and from more I can hide it. So it's hiding all these fields that I don't need. I can right click here on the top and I can hide the field. If I wanted to bring it back, I right click up here and I go to unhide. And I just put the check mark back into the boxes where I have hidden it. Okay. So I'll just click here and hide this one too. So now I can choose to export this column to Word or Excel. So I go to external data and then I choose the in the export I say export it to Excel and I can even say export with data with formatting. I can even tell it to open the Excel file and you can browse and save it to exactly the location where you want it and I click OK. And now it is done. Same way you can export it to PDF, you can export it to Word as a rich text, so I can click it, I can say open the document file when it gets there, but I don't need to. And that's it, it exports it. So I hope you got some more tools to understand Microsoft Access in this video. Uh, so the first two videos have given you a really good understanding of uh, tables and in the next video I will talk about queries and forms and going forward we'll add some more elements. Thank you for watching. To do So to understand this it's better to go into the help function and this help window will come up. Hopefully it will take us to the right section. So there it is come to the input mask. I'm going to scroll down a little and I'm going to keep going down and here is what I'm looking for. So these are the characters that we need to use in that section for input mask so that access will understand. So let's look at a few. So zero character means user must enter a digit. So wherever I want things to be a number, I have to put zero. Nine is you can enter a digit. That means entering a digit is optional. So in my case, it's not an option that people can skip a number. They have to type it. L means you must enter a letter. And A means 
uh, sorry, where is one more? There is another one which says you can enter a letter or you write there the question mark. So in my case, I need a must, so I'll have to use L. So I'm just going to show you here. So to show you what I'll have to type, I'll have to type L, 0, L, space, 0, L, 0. So this means alphabet, number, alphabet, space number alphabet number because that's the understanding I get from my help window and then if I scroll down it will tell me that this symbol here will convert all characters that follow to uppercase so in front of this I'm going to put that symbol so this is what I need to use so and if I want I can just copy it from here I'll minimize this and also this and I'll put it at the start up here. The placeholder is if you don't have to use it, it's like where does it supposed to go? It always is from the left, so I don't have to worry about it. And I'll type a sample data. Now I won't type it capital, I'll just type it lowercase and you see it automatically puts it uppercase. And I'll click close and I'll see a postal code in there. Now I can choose that and I can click finish. So this way you can actually create whatever type of input mask you want. It could be anything that you like. I can click finish and I'll come to, I'm going to click here uh, somewhere and I'll insert a row and I'll put zip code. Now zip code is the American zip code which has a certain format. So now if I click in the input mask, I start the wizard, say yes to saving it and you see there is the zip code and there is a format for it already created and I can finish it and there is the format so the American zip code is like 31211 so it's like five digits and the rest of the stuff is optional so if I come back to the front end by using the data sheet view or from here say yes to it and let's see zip code so you see there it is 31211 and there's the zip code now say for example you wanted to put a zip code or what in most of the world also in Canada it is known as postal code but your postal code format is different so how do you create it so I'll show you how to do that so I'll come to the design view and right above here I'll add another row and say I'll say I want to make a postal code now the data type for postal code should be short text because in our case this is the part two of the Microsoft Access 2013 tutorial. Now a lot of the things that you'll be learning here also applies to 2010. So if I wanted to open my existing file that I had saved in the first video, I called it contact once, I could just open it from here or I can go through open other files and then browse to where the files are either in my computer or in my what's called the sky drive which is the cloud service of Microsoft. So I can just click here and it opens. I can enable the content uh, because I know this is a file which I created. Now there's my table. I can double click on it to look at it. So I haven't added anything more to it. I can close it. If I wanted to go to design view straight away I can just right click on it and I can go to design view. Now I wanted to share something about what is called the input mask like I showed you in the first video for the telephone number I can add this input mask and you see how it put this number there like it's a special way that access understands what to do with the input mask. So what I want to do is I want to add a new field so in Canada our postal codes have a format like M4J to J2 so that's like the format we use in Canada so I'll just bring this up so the format we use is this so I need to create an input mask which will force people to put a alphabet number alphabet and then a space and then a number and also make the capital char characters capital so even if I type it lowercase it will be uppercase so to do this, I have to first click in the line for input mask. Always make sure that you are on the field that you want to change. Otherwise, you'll change city for postal code. So I'll click on input mask. I'll start the wizard by pressing the dots at the end. Say yes to saving it. Now I need to edit. So there's the edit button. 
Now when you are in the edit button, don't start editing because you'll be changing the phone number. What we want to do is we want to create a new blank record. So I click it. So I get a new one and then I'll say let's type call it postal code. Now this is where I have to put a way to tell access what is it that I wanted to